Hello, I'm Anthony Hughes. In this video, I'll be covering the basics of inputting music with your computer mouse or keyboard. We'll cover choosing durations, pitch and accidentals, deleting notes, the keyboard panel, adding more bars as you need them, and the select tool that affects mouse input. You can use either the mouse or your computer keyboard to input in Dorico. You can click to input notes at any rhythmic position using the mouse, but I recommend inputting as far as possible using the computer keyboard. It may take a little practice, but it is optimized for obtaining the quickest results. That said, many people, myself included, end up taking elements of both methods and using the mouse and keyboard in conjunction with each other. Choose a duration to input by making selections in the notes panel. You can expand the visible durations to reveal the full set, ranging from a maxima, which is 32 quarter notes long, to a 1,000th and 24th note, which is really short. When one or more notes are selected, choosing a new duration modifies those notes. You can also use the number keys along the top of your computer keyboard as key commands for the note durations. We've chosen the number six as the shortcut for a quarter note, with shorter note durations accessed by lower numbers and longer note durations by higher numbers, as that means you can access easily the range of the most commonly required note durations, from a 128th note with the one key up to a double whole note with the nine key. When you hover your mouse over a note in the palette, a tooltip shows you its duration and associated key command. With a duration chosen, you can now either click the desired pitch with your mouse or use the letter keys A to G on your computer keyboard. Typing subsequent pitches with the keyboard will create notes at the closest interval to the previous one. For example, here I have input a C. When I type the letter E, it is created a third above that C, as the E below is a sixth, which is a greater interval. Next, if I type the letter B, it is input a fourth below the B because the B above is the larger interval of a fifth. You can tell Dorico you definitely want the pitch above by holding down Shift and Alt while you type the pitch letter. Force Dorico to input the pitch below on Windows by holding down Control and Alt, and that's just Control on Mac. Notes input with a MIDI keyboard will use the exact pitch and octave you play. Before you input a note, you can choose to add an accidental either by using the panel or with one of the last three keys along the number row at the top of the keyboard, zero for natural, dash for flat, and equals for sharp. It might help you to remember those keys if you think about how they also have the plus and minus symbols on them, so are used for raising or lowering the pitch of notes. Of course, there's no need to specify an accidental if you are inputting notes with a MIDI keyboard. You can also add accidentals to selected notes, either with the panel or those key commands. You might notice that the most recently input note remains selected, and this means it's possible to modify its pitch and duration before inputting the next note. Press Alt plus the up or down arrow keys to change its pitch. Add Control, that's Command on Mac, to those commands to alter the pitch by an octave, and hold Shift and Alt and press the right or left arrow keys to lengthen or shorten the note duration by the amount of the rhythmic grid resolution. I'll cover editing pitch and duration fully in another video. When note input is active, pressing backspace deletes the note to the left of the carrot and moves the carrot back so you can enter a new note in its stead. Outside of note input, select notes and press backspace or delete to remove them. Now there is another way. If you reveal the lower zone, you can switch to the keyboard panel, which lets you tap notes to input them as if you were playing a MIDI keyboard. The most used note durations are available here, as well as slurs and articulations, so you can hide the notes panel and work this way if you like. There's also a button for advancing the carrot and deleting notes. Of course, this is an essential tool to have when working in Dorico for iPad. You can change the visible area of the keyboard with this overview control and make the panel taller or shorter. Selected notes are indicated on the keyboard panel by blue dots. When inputting music using a computer or MIDI keyboard, as you reach the end of the flow, additional bars are automatically added as they are required. You can add more bars manually exactly where you need them, 
either by using the Add Bars button on the System track, which will add as many bars as there are selected in the System track, by using the Insert Bars section of the Bars and Bar Lights panel, or by making a selection at the point where you would like new bars inserted, which can be in the middle of a bar if you like, pressing Shift B for bars and entering the number you need. Activating the Select tool disables mouse input. Now, clicking with the mouse selects items even when no input is active. Some people benefit from the protection that the Select tool gives them, as it removes the opportunity of mistakenly clicking random notes into the score. If you're like me, and predominantly use the keyboard to input notes, you can set a preference to control this behavior in new projects. By unchecking the preference to enable note input using the mouse, that in effect activates the select tool in all new projects. It's always possible to uncheck the button to enable mouse input temporarily as you work. For more information about working with pitch and duration in Dorico, please check out my separate video that covers dotted notes, ties, double sharps and flats, and much more, as well as the pitch before duration input method. I'm Anthony Hughes. Thanks for watching.